everybody? It's right back at it again with another video. I hope you all had a very good New Year's and we're on to 2022 with the brand new update that came out with Ready or Not. I want to talk about that, but first I kind of want to get to the stuff that came out before this update. I wanted to put things in order of the events that happened, but I just didn't have time. And then we'll get into that update. So yeah, but before we do that, be sure to like up the video so that more people can see it. Subscribe and ding that bell if you're new so that you can get more content on Ready or Not or any other game that I decide to cover. All right, let's go ahead and hop into this bad boy. So Ready or Not, not too long ago, hopped into early access but about a month before that they had actually posted on steam this update ready or not early access announcement and this update needs a bit of context so about a month before they dropped this update they had actually updated the build for supporters that basically revamps the co-op single player takes out the multiplayer and abolishes the nda would i say that it's a significant update mm, yeah kind of i mean it does take away a lot of features and mechanics and the multiplayer is just completely missing but it was done in a way so that it could give us what we wanted all along a swap for successor so yeah if you would like my full review of this current build of the game i'll put a link at the top right of the video on the eye icon or in the description this is actually like the first time in like three years that this game has actually felt like a swap for successor but uh yeah oh and i should probably clarify i'm not saying that this game is giving up on multiplayer i'm just saying that it's just not in this update it's not available a lot of people were getting confused in my previous video asking me if they actually got rid of multiplayer completely and no they are still going to do multiplayer it's just not in this update I just wanted to clarify that to let people know if that changes then I'll let you know But basically the point that I'm trying to make here is that void interactive finally made ready or not look good So good that people actually started to buy into it They had an influx of people coming in and trying to buy through their website that they actually ended up running out of keys They posted about this on Twitter on their Twitter It says to everyone interested in purchasing the supporter edition of ready or not There may be a slight delay in receiving your game key for about three to seven days due to high demand We are currently in the process of acquiring more steam keys. We will keep you up updated as we have more information so yeah a uh, week came and went and everybody's just like where the hell are the keys like i just saw like non-stop keys 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 this and that in the freaking discord and this is where the update comes in an update regarding ready or not's launch on steam early access to the ready or not community present and future as you may be aware we have been working alongside steam to secure more game keys for the supporter edition of ready or not but we hit a roadblock while unfortunate we hope that this will be a result in welcome news for many of you we can no longer generate new steam keys unless we go live on steam and since we absolutely depend on pre-sale income to continue developing ready or not we have decided to go live into steam early access by the end of 2021 so yeah turns out that steam wasn't letting void have any keys and a lot of people were putting the blame on steam which i think is valid but i also kind of have to blame void on this too because they did kind of take forever to get the game out in early access and even then it was more like a rush job than getting it out when it had a lot more content and i'm sure steam was like all right we gave you a bunch of keys already we think we've given you enough we're gonna need our cut so release it on steam like that's what i think kind of happened here maybe void kind of took forever but that might not be the case because i was actually reading on twitter and that's actually been happening to multiple indie studios i think i saw that um drakeling labs had that issue and uh the guys behind no plan b and i think also project zomboid also or maybe it was a phrase studios the guys behind uh scp pandemic one of those studios they were also having that same issue where steam kind of just stopped giving them game keys for their own games and told them to release into early access i'd go into it more but what i'm talking about is just getting off track that's a topic for another day back to the update so releasing into early access would actually be good for people who bought the standard like eons ago because now they'll finally get to play it why have we been so hesitant to go live on steam simply put while steam is an excellent platform for indie developers it is also a very crowded marketplace with tens of thousands of titles all competing for limited attention to really stand out on steam we believe that we have a responsibility to deliver a solid product that speaks for itself we did did not want to risk launching a game that we felt wasn't up to snuff for our audience. However, under present circumstances, we feel that the best course of action is to transition to beta, albeit early stage, so that we are able to resume providing supporter packages to our backers and secure the resource necessary to continue the game's development. This will also allow Steam's large audience to have an opportunity to experience Ready or Not sooner than they would have otherwise. So I wanted to comment on this. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that statement. The statement here that says, tens of thousands of titles all competing for limited attention to really stand out on Steam. We believe we have the responsibility to deliver a solid product that speaks
speaks for itself. I don't necessarily agree with this statement because there's not that many games that are trying to do a swap for spiritual successor here. Like, to say that it's unique, it's like the most unique thing that I've seen in a long time. I mean, there are games that are trying to, but they're either like not finished or just don't look, you know, like modern enough in my opinion. At the time that they had actually released this, I was thinking that Ready or Not was actually going to be successful, but what I wasn't expecting it to be like extremely successful. I knew it was going to get a lot of copies sold, but I didn't think it was going to become freaking first page top 10 during the Christmas season, no less. Like, goddamn, sold like freaking hotcakes. I think that anyone with the brain could see that Ready or Not would be successful, although to what extent we weren't exactly clear. No, I didn't buy this statement. What I really think was like, oh my god, if we launch on Steam, that means that people are going to be able to get their refunds. Because during the time that Ready or Not had like so many like bad debacles, there was like several people that wanted their money back, but they just couldn't get it back. But now that it's on Steam, they're going to have that option. So Void Interactive, you better be coming with the bangers, just saying. Anyways, many AAA studios have incredibly deep pockets and spend tens of millions developing their games, a luxury that Void Interactive does not have. We live and die by the support of our community, and we are extremely grateful for those who have followed and continued to follow us on this journey. This statement is interesting, the part where it says, a luxury that Void Interactive does not have. I mean, you guys have Team 17 in your pocket, right? I think this statement right here is probably what prompted a lot of people to start investigating, because what did they mean by that? So people looked at their Steam and saw that Team 17 wasn't there. At this point, people started to notice that Team 17 was kind of absent from anything Void Interactive related. Not being able to get keys might not only be the motivating factor for going into early access. And this revelation kind of actually sparked a bit of a controversy, I guess. But in my opinion, it's completely bogus. I ended up covering that and giving my thoughts as to why Team 17 departed from Void Interactive. And if you want to watch that video, I'll have a link to it in the description or at the top right on the eye icon for you guys to check out. But anyways, what can you expect in the near future? We plan to go live on Steam Early Access before the end of the year. To our supporters, you will receive a new key to load into the game into your Steam library. This build will essentially be the same as what you have now, including recent patches, and it will represent the transition from Alpha to Beta. I was actually really confused with this because when I got both keys, I assumed that I had to activate both of them to get to the game as it was. But when I activated the standard edition, it didn't do anything. It said that I already owned the game, so I was like, oh, well, okay. Then I activated the supporter, and that one worked, but then my game kind of like stuttered out and didn't work for a bit. I don't know, it was really weird when I activated it, but I asked them if this standard key was actually valid and they said that it was. And I was like, oh, so I could just give this away. And they're like, yeah, okay, cool. Another thing added to the supporter edition was a free key, at least uh, for OG supporters. I don't know about the newer ones. Owners of the supporter edition who purchased Ready or Not via our website will continue to have access to the game's alpha branch to test the new upcoming content. We are working with Steam in order to make this available for those who purchased supporter pack on Steam as well. Supporters will continue to get exclusive access to the dev team through monthly live Q&A sessions, community polls, and play tests on the supporter discord. These new benefits are in addition to what is already included in the supporter edition. Upon going live on Steam, the supporter edition and upgrade option will continue to be available for purchase through our website and will also be available for purchase directly on Steam. For standard edition buyers, access to the beta build will finally be open to you on launch on Steam, early access. If you had purchased the game through our website, Exola will be emailing you your game key to the email address on record. With this key, you will gain access to the game, as you currently see being streamed, which includes co-op and single player action. In conclusion, please remember that the beta build will be available soon. It is still an incomplete version of the game. It will still have bugs and quirks, and will require lots of additional content before it is ready for full release. Because of our supporters, and with your help, we will continue to push Ready or Not, adding more content, new maps, missions, characters, weapons, etc., and further refining it to get the game up to the standard that you deserve. We ultimately want you to be able to turn the lights out, crank up the volume, and be immersed in the action, bring order to chaos. So I have a video talking about this and going in real depth with this. My thoughts on the release of this build to the public on whether it's worth it or not. If you want to watch that video, I'll uh, I'll put it down in the description or at the icon. But basically, I'm just not that happy that they decided to launch it just like this. Like they should have either added more content or cut down on the price. Like maybe cut it down to like 20 bucks. Because if they're just like going into early access and calling it beta and not freaking adding anything, then it's really not worth that 40. Like I feel like I've already played like a majority of the content and that's pretty much all they had for this update like there was more content in the previous build than there is in this one i mean i get that they weren't getting keys from steam and that team 17 might have also been a motivating factor for them to try and go into early access but you know they should have added more or cut down on the price because they initially wanted to launch into early access sometime in june july of 2022 at least that's what i was hearing in the background but yeah if you want to hear more of my thoughts on that then there is another video that i already made i'll have a link to that and yeah that's pretty much the end of that update
update. It's another good update by Guinevere, the community manager at Void Interactive. And yeah, that's that. So after this update, there was a whole debacle with a bogus article. I already made a video about that, so I'm not going to talk about it. Links in the description. Then after that, they released a couple of concept art for the bad guys that are going to be featured in the farm mission. The farm mission itself was actually pretty tough. I mean, before it wasn't as bad, I remember. We actually did finish it at one point, but they dropped an update making the mission like a lot harder. And these guys actually like shoot on sight pretty much. So it's like hard to actually get them to surrender. That mission's freaking tough now. I'm actually kind of curious. Are they going to replace the guys that are already in there or are they just adding them into the map? I'm pretty sure they're just going to replace it, but I'm not entirely sure. But man, these freaking new concept art of the bad guys are kind of wild. Like this one has a freaking weird hand where his head should be. These guys have like wooden faces on their heads and grass on their attire. Some sort of cloth on them. I think the one at the top left there actually has lips like a female. I'm not sure. Could be a dude. They have even more concept art here. I'm assuming that like they just gradually put on this type of uh, bush, I guess you'd call it. I assume this is like the final product here because it looks like now it's fully covering this guy. According to Grunter, he says that it's the weed man. I don't know if that's actually what he's doing or if he's just screwing around. He's probably just screwing around, but anyways, that's an interesting enemy type. Kind of out of left field, but I guess it's going to be crazy to see what they look like when they're coming at us with freaking guns and stuff. I just noticed that one of these guys actually has a knife in it. It looks like a machete. They're also going to be charging at us too. That's going to be freaking nuts, but that's all I really got to say about that. Moving on to the next thing, they ended up dropping a mock-up of Penthouse. Penthouse was a map that we had before in the previous update, but it was very like unfinished. It was mostly just gray textures and yeah, so they dropped a picture and it definitely looks a lot better than what was there previously. The picture itself is just basically a giant room with a bed in the middle. I believe they said that it's a queen size. Looks like it's still pretty early, but I see like a bunch of guns on the ground right there in the middle. It's interesting, but it's nice to see that a map that was removed is getting worked on. We're actually seeing progress here and that's pretty much it for that. Moving on to the next thing, Rapolio ends up dropping two new designs for the SWAT uniforms. You've got the one on the left that's specifically for the Port Hulken map with the shipping containers called Impervious, where it's just basically a SWAT off officer with a bunch of like rain gear on I assume because Port Hoken is a you know a mission that has like a bunch of rain on it and obviously you don't want to get your stuff wet and on the right this is the uniform that's supposed to be for 213 Park Holmes the mole I assume they call it the mole because there's a bunch of like tunnels in the ground like that's the only reason why I would think they'd call it the mole because there's like a mole that's digging underneath the meth house I assume but anyways and the uniform is essentially a DEA uniform which if you don't know what the DEA is it's basically for drugs and narcotics and you know, they go after people for harboring things like crack cocaine and methamphetamine and all that type of stuff. Now, obviously, the missions don't require you to wear these uniforms. It's just like another cosmetic that you can put on for any mission. Looks like there's some text on the side here. I can barely read what it says. It says, better kit, balaclava, badge on the belt, gloves. I'm assuming that this is things that they want to add to this because I don't see any of the stuff that it says right here on this guy. I don't see a badge on the belt or gloves. So that's pretty neat. It's cool to see the concept of that for when it actually comes into the game. Can't wait to see it. That's it for that. They also did release a couple of guns here, but I kind of want to put that in with the newer update that we're about to talk about and show them off as I'm talking about them. So uh, yeah, if they don't talk about specific weapons that were featured before this update, then I'll just add them in at the end. So uh, let's go ahead and talk about this January update. So when I first looked at it, I was like, oh my fucking eyes, why is it so bright? I actually... <laughs> I actually said that to Guinevere. I was like, why did you make it so bright? And she responded with, so people sitting in the dark room can turn on the light. That was funny. One of my subscribers actually inverted the image and sent it to me. <laughs> You didn't need to do that, but all right, thank you. So for your viewing pleasure, we'll look at the dark version, I guess. All right, so let's read what this says. To the Ready or Not community, it's hard to believe that 2021 is almost gone. For Void Interactive, December alone has felt like a whole year. We are incredibly humbled and grateful for all the support and attention Ready or Not has received. We've been fortunate enough to spend time with our families this holiday season, and the team is excited to continue working on our next update. In the short run, we expect to release a content update onto the Supporter Alpha sometime in January, and after a period of testing and validation, launch it onto the main early access branch for all players. Wait, so are you saying that the early supporters are actually going to get priority over the standard edition buyers? Is that what I'm hearing? Because if so, that's great. That's how it should be. Because damn it, that supporter edition was expensive and not really worth it. But if they're making it worth it now, then that's great. I think they actually said that they were going to do
do that, but I don't remember. But anyways, they are planning on adding five game modes to existing maps. They want to put Raid on 213 Park Homes, Twisted Nerve, Bomb Defusal on Port Hoken, Hide and Seek, Hostage Rescue on Caesar's Car Dealership, Buy Cheap, Buy Twice, and Active Shooter and Hostage on Winderly Hills Hotel's Check-In. Neat. So it's good to see more content. And now they're adding game modes to each existing map. Very nice. You know, actually on the Reddit, I think I saw that somebody discovered that there was like a full like done room and corridors, but it's like completely blocked off. And I think that's because the game modes that they're adding to the house are probably going to unlock those areas. Because I've noticed on some maps when you do different game modes, you actually go into different parts of the map that you wouldn't be able to get into beforehand. The next thing here is new and improved voice lines. New voice actor for tactical operations command talk. Removal of the outdated legacy voice lines. More voice line variety for civilians. Sweet. Yeah, I really hated those freaking voice lines, especially for like the civilians. Ooh, nice tattoos. My mom is a Mexican maid. Like, what the fuck? What are these voice lines? <laughs> but anyways, new weapons. The R7 MagFed highly customizable pepper gun. A highly customizable pepper gun? Don't we already have a pepper gun in the game? We're gonna get a different kind? Interesting. The next one is the MK16 Scar L556 assault rifle. Oh my god, my baby Scar is coming back to the game. Yeehaw. The next one is Krinkoff SLR powerful submachine gun, which I believe this is just another AK variant, if I'm not mistaken, but more modern. I'm gonna get rid of shreds in the comments, I can already tell. But anyways, the next one is the MK1 BCM 5.56 assault rifle, exclusive for supporter edition owners. Ooh. Ooh, really? So we're getting three weapons that are exclusive now, apparently. I wonder if they're gonna add more. Gimme, give gimme. Give there was actually a lot of people that were confused about this. They were thinking, wait, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Are you telling me that all the supporters are gonna get the god weapons? Is this game becoming pay to win? No, that's not the case. The guns aren't any different from standard edition buyers. It's just that you don't get access to them. Like Void Interactive actually came out and explained this one on their Twitter. They came out and said, a point of clarification regarding the MK1 BCM rifle for supporters. This weapon provides no statistical advantage to players. It performs exactly like the HK416 in game. It just takes up its own slot because it's a unique skeleton mesh. Ron will never be pay to win in any way. Yeah, so glad they cleared that up because I didn't even think that a lot of people were actually thinking that it was a pay to win. But I mean, I guess Ready or Not is a game that comes from a different time when pay to wins weren't a big thing. But anyways, the next thing on the list here is improved weapons and equipment. Improved weapon description and loadout menu. Yeah, because apparently there's a lot of like typos and some weapons that don't even match up to the uh, picture that's being shown. I think somebody showed off a picture of like a shotgun in the picture, but the description read Scar L or something like that. But anyways, G19 model upgrade to Gen 5. It'd be cool if we could just keep both of them, but uh, well, I'm just gonna do an upgrade then, it's whatever. The M9A1 new model. Interesting. The CS Gas Stinger and Flashbangs are apparently getting new models. Okay, cool. I actually don't even know what they look like. I feel like every time that I've thrown either one of them, they all just look like Flashbangs to me. You know, I kind of hope that they bring back the uh, Nine Bang. I like the Nine Banger a lot. I hope they bring that back. But anyways, other improvements include alpha testing for other languages language localization, German, Korean, and French. More to come later. Oh, cool. Application for Vivox for improved in-game comms, better clarity and volume, ability to change input devices. Oh my god, yes. Like, I've been having so many freaking issues with in-game talking that I just stuck to Discord. Like, for the most part, I've been hearing people clearly in the game, at least in the lobby area, but when it comes to, like, in-game, like, they say that my voice is, like, really choppy in-game, which kind of sucks. But hopefully this fixes that. The next one is improving and reworking rules of engagement of forced penalties. Yeah, I hear that, um, there are a lot of new people that are just running and gunning and all that stuff and obviously that's not what the game is all about like you're not supposed to kill people that's not the goal of the game you're supposed to arrest them you want them alive don't kill them unless you know you're being shot at that's the ultimate goal of an officer is to apprehend so that they can later be judged you know but anyways adjustments to civilian ai morale and likelihood to surrender yes yes this is great because there's so many goddamn times when a civilian will literally just keep running and running and running i think somebody actually just posted a video where he literally ran throughout an entire map to try and freaking stop a civilian from running. Like, seriously, guys, come on. And I straight up just ran away from me. And there's no freaking sprinting button, so I can't go after them. So it's like, well, shit, he's gone. That's pretty nice. Improved voting and player control. Server admins have the ability to kick players as hosts. Yes, finally. Jesus Christ. That's something that I've been craving ever since this whole freaking update came out because it's like, not everybody is on the thing that I could just like kick that person and be like, sorry, man, I'm sure you mean well, but we're all trying to start a game here. So 
bye bye that's probably like the feature that i was looking forward to the most if i'm being honest along with these new additions we will be releasing patches and bug fixes as often as we can once again we would like to thank you all for the tremendous amount of support we have received if you are enjoying playing ready or not we encourage you to leave a review and follow us on steam um i would leave a review but i'm just like i want to kind of wait until you know there's a lot more there you know because if i left a review i feel like i would kind of be harsh about it you know because there's just not a lot here at the moment there's actually less content than there was in the previous update and you know i want to give this game a fair shot i want to wait until it's a much more completed product for me to give a review you know but yeah so that was a pretty good announcement a lot of things are being added hopefully we could actually get it out by the end of uh, january but who knows with the way that these guys put out actual build updates is kind of like um iffy i guess is the right word it did take them a very long time to actually update a lot of things before so we'll see how they go with trying to update things and that was that pretty freaking cool pretty freaking cool let's just hope that they actually get it out relatively soon and not three months later but we're not done yet there's still more stuff to talk about so after that they actually did drop a couple of new updates here so as of the recording of this video there is a mirror in the locker room that you can just walk up to and you can't really see yourself i mean you can kind of see yourself but not really in the next update they're apparently going to fix it ali just dropped a video of mirror mirror on the wall who's the clearest of them all and you can now actually see yourself according to that but this only works i assume if you have rtx right which i do so hopefully it'll actually work so that's pretty neat another update was just dropped today by grunter who says some updates to our level on meth mark hard at work the goal for every level is a dense amount of environmental storytelling and high quality art yeah these pictures here is obviously the underground of meth it looks like they're digging into concrete you can tell by the steel rebar and asphalt I'm not sure where this is coming in from though i'm assuming that this is just like another way to get in like from the back or something which if that is that's pretty cool and then the other picture here is of the little kids room which previously was pretty empty there wasn't too much aside from the kid that was kind of struggling on the bed there and this one it looks like they actually put a lot more effort into it they got the freaking clock on the wall little dresser over there chest guitar and it actually looks like a fairly normal house considering the rest of it you could almost not even tell that it's a freaking meth house i guess with all this stuff here those little night lights that are on the wall the teddy bear the legos don't step on those definitely an overhaul from the previous one i think the only thing that would complete this is if they put like a carpet like a giant carpet that just goes underneath the bed and heads towards the door there and back around to where that lamp is giant carpet but yeah pretty good pretty good pretty good along with that they released new animations for the bcm rifle which i will play for you here you got the fast reload the regular reload And checking the ammo. Pretty nice. And then they got the P92X. Uh, unfortunately, it does have music on it, and I don't know if it's copyrighted or not, so I'm just gonna take off the audio, and you can just watch the, uh, the animations here. Looks pretty good. I'll have those videos in my Discord so you can just look at them with the audio on. Just for the sake of copyright reasons, I don't want to turn on the audio. And yeah, that pretty much does it for Ready or Not News. Definitely was quite a bit of stuff to talk about and I hope I got it all and there wasn't like any freaking surprise release because now I'm be like, God dang it, I just released this freaking video. But oh well, I guess I'll just cover that in like the next one. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna end it here. If you enjoyed the fact that I cover games like Ready or Not, then be sure to like the video, share the video and comment down below. If you're someone that would like to support the channel, check out my Patreon or click on the join button underneath the video if you're someone that's new to the channel be sure to subscribe and ding that bell so that you can get more content on ready or not or any other game that i decided to cover and with that all being said i want to thank everybody for coming out to watch and i guess i'll catch you in the next one Bye bye